What's going on everybody? We're sitting here in Merit Poker with Steve Adwaya. Yesterday he won the 25k tournament and actually I watched uh, in the hand -em up and it was only the 30th your best score with the $312,000. But maybe any feelings about tournament yesterday? Um, yeah, it, it felt great. Like, you know, it's been a year and a half since I played any live poker and playing live poker is my favorite thing in the world to do. Like, it's the best. Like, online is nice, but it's not the same. Like, there's live poker is so much more interesting and fun to play and social. And uh, to be able to, you know, come right in, second tournament I played to win it, even though it was a small field, and, you know, in the you know, in my career, it's not the biggest score or anything. It's it's one of the sweetest wins I've ever had, for sure. Just like, is this last year and a half I've just been dreaming, like, I can't wait to play live poker again. I miss it so much. And then, uh, you know, to just have a big success right off the bat, it's really special. Uh, it's really good to hear that. And you just mentioned about the small field tournaments, and uh, you're one of the guys I really wanted to ask this thing. Uh, probably you have different approach for playing like these high stakes small field tournaments at yesterday's was 34 entries and like measures what's your preparation maybe it's different and how you maybe in strategy wise or any any other differences for you yeah the strategy differs quite a bit when you're playing in one of these small field events where you know pretty much everybody that's playing you've played sometimes thousands of hours with some of the players at the table um, Whereas if you're playing in a main event, you're rarely going to be at a table where you know everybody. Uh, there's always going to be different players that you really have to make sure you go into those events uh, with like a clear mind and not be have any distractions so that when you do show up to play your day one or day two of the main event, that you have the ability to focus on uh, your opponents and try to figure out what their tendencies are, what their tendencies might be. Because, um, you know, you only have a certain amount of time in those tournaments before the blinds get so big that you're not going to be able to have any more of a chance to get a good read on players. So when you show up for these big events, uh, you just want to be able to sit down and watch players closely for those first few hours and, you know, give yourself the best opportunity to develop some reads. Um, and of course you can stereotype certain types of players like you know you look at somebody and just be like well you know it doesn't really have the mannerisms or the confidence of a professional so like you know this guy's probably an amateur and then you try to determine like is he like a wealthy amateur or is he someone that satellited in for a small amount of money and this is a very big moment for them Whereas, like, if it was someone that's wealthy that, you know, has probably played high stakes before that you just haven't encountered, they might not be taking it as seriously and might be more prone to bluffing it off or making a big call. Um, so just being able to show up to these main events fresh and focused gives you a big, big edge. And actually, you mentioned a thing that I'm really curious about. Uh, as I'm also the poker player, I'm really interested in the reads in the in life tells as you mentioned because you know some of the players they said the poker for the mentals are the the basic thing you like you should not overestimate the things you can get from the faces from the their gestures section what's your opinion about the reads in general you, you started to talk about it but I really want to know uh, because I, I feel it all the time I'm sitting on a table you know should I trust my guts or not yeah it's incredibly important and anybody that says that live reads are important doesn't know what they're talking about. You really can get an enormous edge over certain types of players if you're able to kind of figure out what's making them tick and if you can kind of predict how they're going to react to certain cards or... Um, yeah, it's, it's not an exact science. It's very hard to describe. But, you know, I've been playing live poker now for 15 years. And I can assure you, it's very, very important. Um, it's not quite as important now in the highest stakes because most players are very good at hiding tells. 
Um, but even a few years ago, uh, the player pool was much worse at that, and I felt like that was a big reason why I did so well, uh, you know, in the early days of su the super high roller fields, um, kind of expanding worldwide, you know. It was kind of, kind of around 2011, 2012, 2013 was when we started seeing super high roller events pop up at like every major tournament stop. And in those days, I think a lot of the players who were playing uh, weren't very good at that kind of stuff. Whereas like I have always focused a lot on that. I've always thought it was very important. Um, these days though, like the very best professionals at high stakes are also very good at it too and are very good at concealing any sort of tells that they might have had in the past. We were in the kind of situation last couple of years and uh, could you describe us your time during the pandemics? You know, I just was kind of holed up in my apartment with my girlfriend and for the first nine months or so I was pretty much just playing online every day. It started off pretty well, I was doing okay and then uh, I, I definitely started to get burned out and was getting more sloppy and wasn't as excited every day to play and I definitely had a pretty big downswing um, kind of it late last year early this year and then the last few months I realized like I'm getting very burned out it won't be long before I'm able to play live poker again I'm just gonna take it easy only play like the things I absolutely want to play online and um, once I'm able to play live again I'll start you know ramping up my volume again but yeah the for the first nine months though, I was playing pretty much every day. It was crazy online action. Uh, unfortunately, it didn't go so well, but you know, I'm still here. Yeah, and uh, well. you know, I'm happy to play live again. You know, that's always been my, my best uh, venue for poker. Yeah, and you just came in the SSTOL second tournament, you bam, again, that's cool. Yeah. And as you are as a live player, and in a couple of years before when you talked with, with uh, and other guys, you talked about the traveling, and I understand that you said you burn out. What about the near future, your plans, maybe traveling? You said you really want to, to do so. So what, what are coming dates? Well, I know most people are going to the World Series coming up, but I'm not going to do that. Uh, I've never been a fan of playing at the Rio, and you know, while I do want to play live poker again, I'm not going not gonna to make an exception for the Rio. Uh, so I think kind of once the World Series is over, I'm sure we'll see more and more tournaments start to get announced. You know, I'd be really excited to go back to, to Asia. Hopefully we can play at Macau again. It's been several years. Uh, I think the last tournaments we played in Macau was 20, early 2018 maybe. So um, I'm hoping Mac Macau Poker comes back and uh, you know, I'd love to play some Triton events again. Those are always the most fun. Um, and yeah, EPT, hopefully we'll see an EPT on the schedule soon. And definitely, I think by the springtime, you know, hopefully for sure Monte Carlo. I, I, I'd be really surprised if we don't get to go to Monte Carlo in the spring. And that's always one of my favorite favorite places to play. Um, yeah, I mean, we'll just, we'll just see what gets announced. But I'm definitely looking forward to playing more again because I had so much fun in the last few days. It's great to hear that, and I wish you all the best. You, 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 after the pandemics, you made one of the best possible starts, and I think you will move up to the ladder. Appreciate it a lot. Yeah, no problem. I just wish I could play the main event here. I can't. I, I got to go to uh, Mike Watson. Uh, his wedding is in a few days, so I'm, I'm leaving tomorrow morning. And uh, you know, but I would love to come back to Merritt and play uh, another one of these big, big tournament series because I had a great time here. I'm really glad to hear that. So enjoy the ride. Appreciate it. See you guys.